Danes. They're up against Unga Pratama and the Rian Agun Saputra of Indonesia, the number 10 seeds. Well, after the excitement of that women's doubles, now we need to go and get Steen a nice cup of tea, help him calm down, because, of course, he was heavily involved in the early coaching of uh, Christina Pedersen and Camilla Ruta, who are also understandable that his feelings to see two of his former players through to the semi-final of a World Championship. So here come the Indonesians, the number 10 seeds, Anga Pratama and the Rian And the Danes, the former world number ones. And Olympic silver medalists, of course. And what a tradition Indonesia have in men's doubles in world terms, both at the World Championships and, of course, at Olympic Games. One good pair after another produced by Indonesia, but, of course, as far as World Championships is concerned for Denmark. We have to go back to 1983. And then what year did Rasmussen and Forska win? 2003, so... 2003, so twice. And uh, Jung Halst and Thomas Lund won the All England in 1993, so... Yeah. It's been exactly 10 years between yeah. those three events, so... It's about time. I don't know, I wonder. Well, still a fair number of loyal fans have remained in the Tianhe Gymnasium. And this, of course, is for the right to play against Kim Ping Jong and Kim Sa Rang, the number five seeds from Korea, who disposed of the number two seeds, Ku Kian Kiat and Tan Bu Hyong rather easy fashion earlier on today. So the left-handed uh, Matthias Bo, 33 years of age now. And their world ranking down three places on yesterday's world ranking list, down to number six in the world. One final this year. They match the final of the Korean Super Series. All previous tournaments they've played so far this year, all four of them, they've been the number one seeds. Also included in the win-loss record, of course, for the year is uh, team competitions. And they didn't have the best of European mixed team championships either, this Danish combination, because they lost out to Chris Athcock and Andy Ellis. So to... Unga Pratama, the 21-year-old from Jakarta. And their win-loss record for the year. A couple of titles, in fact, two titles in two weeks. The Australian Grand Prix and the New Zealand International. Rian Agun Saputra, a little older than his partner at the age of 23. Formed their partnership at, at the beginning of 2009 but really regulars on tour since 2010. Now, Steen, that will perhaps help calm your nerves, seeing the previous encounters between these two pairs. <laughs> both of them won by the Danes, and both won in two straight games, including the first round of the All England Championships earlier this year. It was fairly close, though, 21-18, 21-19. There, the Indonesian coach... The Danish coaches well, hardly time to take breath since the last quarter-final, and certainly no time to celebrate with Peterson and Rutiol back to business immediately. Uh, 
Stefan Vorenbeck of Belgium is in the umpire's chair. Franz Schlieben of Austria, the service judge. So the number three seeds from Denmark, Bo and Morgensen, against the number ten seeds, Pratama and Saputra. Yeah. Well, the Danes have been in partnership for some considerable time, formed their partnership in 2004, so this year is their tenth year playing together. And twice previous to this, they've been in the quarterfinal of the World Championship, so this is their third consecutive quarterfinal. But, Steen, you and I were talking earlier in the week about how the men's doubles really is the one discipline here at the World Championships that's been really open from the start. You can't really put favourites on it. No, it seems the Frank High are actually capable of playing at least two very good games. Uh, quite expected that uh, Asan and Sichuan uh, is through to the semi-finals, and I actually hold uh, Bowen and Mogensen as uh, small favourites to qualify for the final in this part of the draw. I know that's a long way, and, and they will hopefully be <laughs> focusing on one match at a time. Uh, Indonesians, they uh, created an upset beating Liu Xiaolong and Chiu Sihan yesterday, a pair that the Danes have had big problems with. And there's always two ways of looking at that. Either it's good because you, playing style-wise, is better suited for the Indonesians compared to the Chinese, or there's a reason why the Indonesians beat the Chinese. They're actually quite good. The Indonesians up one place in the world ranking to a career high of eight. So there's no doubting they are pretty good. But both these pairs beat Whoa! Chinese opposition yesterday. Danes beat the number nine seeds, Zhang Nan and Chai Biao. Two straight games. And as you rightly say, this Indonesian pair beat the All England champions, Liu Xiao Long and Chu Si Han. Well, the surprising oh! Nine and Three, 19 and 15. Five. Oh! oh service fault called, struck above the waist. Says Klaus Schlieben. BWF should ah. arrange players' calls for signals regarding service faults. Goodness me. Oh, miss hit, hit the top of the tape. Deflected the shuffle quite badly. Turned 33 last month. Carsten Mokensen turned 30 last month. Oh, oh service oh. called. Oh. Mm, again, above the waist. Well, I'm not surprised to be honest. Yeah, that's a good call. Now, just to explain a little further about the serve. So it must be struck below the Whoa! waist, but the waist is defined in badminton. It's not the waist Five, that seven. you and I would think of as a waist. It's below the lowest rib. Ah. 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 And of course, 
with all the players nowadays. It's very trendy, of course, to have the shirt outside the shorts. But in, in my day, we used to have the shirts tucked into shorts, the, yeah. the male players, and therefore it was easier to see where the waist was. And if they're folded a lot of times, they sometimes tuck the shirt in and pull up <laughs> their shorts all the way up to the chest. Pratama. I haven't really watched them play a lot. They've been sort of aspiring to make a breakthrough for a quite long time. Yeah, well, I remember the first time I really took note of them was in the Indonesia Super Series oh. event two years ago, 2011, when they beat Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day in two straight games. And in I thought, crikey, who is this young pair? Well, quite clear that the service judge, being consistent with all the players, whether it's consistent with other service judges throughout the tournament is debatable. to see the services that are not faulted but it could be fun to watch footings taking from exactly the same position. Well here we are at 11-6 we've had six minutes of play and in all honesty at least a minute of that was taken up with some colleagues of ours that have got a television light beaming onto the court and the tournament referee had to run on and say that's affecting the players, you can't do that. And we've hardly had a rally, Steen. You know, we've talked about this on many an occasion. That, that's, uh, that's totally on purpose from the Danish point of view, yeah. because that's what's so good with Carsten and Matthias, that they serve really well, they return really well also, and the third and fourth shots are good. So they don't look to play long rallies. In a way, you could uh, compare them with uh, some one of the old players, Jens Eriksson, Martin yeah. Lundgaard, who also was very, very good at the service situation. Um, I actually think that Matthias and Carstens are, are even better in that particular part of the game. It's a bit high. Oh. Immediately. But they thought of play their own style and, and they play that style against any pair. Whoa! Yeah. Some trouble sometimes. They've had difficulties with the English pair, Chris Atkirk and Andy Ellis, because they're also very, very strong in the service situation. Well, a little look from Carsten Morganson towards the umpire. I thought it was a correct call by the line judge. Serve. Very steep smash from Matthias Ball. Not as hard a smash as Custom Morganson, but very steep.
Well, I think that's something, a very good point, Steen, in general with the two Danish players. When they do attack, they're not the hardest smashers in the game, but they always place the shuttle so well, whether it's steepness or exactly like that. Aiming towards the right shoulder of Pratama, getting him all tangled up. It doesn't have to be that powerful if you smash no. in the right place. Of course, they are two very tall players, so that they should uh, try to exploit that. Yeah, 185. Danes got them both down at 185. Is that right? Yeah, I guess that's that's true. I'm totally dominating the service situation. really just not being allowed to settle into the match at all. As I say, really only that one rally to calm the nerves. Mm, it's it. And the Danes have been controlling everything. very much his favoured position to come forward to the net and he doesn't often miss many of those. Uh, that was encouragement from Lars Uwas at well played. Yeah, there's another terrific attacking shot. Again, going for angle and placement. And with it come nine opportunities to close out this opening game. Saved. Third time lucky as far as the number three so seeds are concerned. Twenty one thirteen in fourteen minutes. And the Danes 
looking very much in command at the moment. Well, I would have thought, Steen, if the Danes can maintain their discipline on the serve return and third shot and therefore force the Indonesians to lift now that they're this near side of the court as we look down there's a strong possibility the Indonesians will lift long yeah. and uh, there'll be simple points yeah so, so what they're discussing is what are we going to do when they find out they can't lift they're going to challenge the net Way, perhaps, and, and we're going to be ready for that. Defensive play has Matthias Bow. Yeah, he's, he's improved a lot in the defense, and I also think that the Olympic medal has helped oh. a bit. Because they have succeeded in a big, big tournament, the biggest of them all. And that should give them quite a bit of confidence. They really want this World Championship medal that are sort of missing. Similar to their Olympic. Ah! The, the way I remember it, they hold a very good head to head record against uh, Kim and Kim. Should they make it to the semi final? Ah! Oh. Well, you're right. The World Championship ah! medal is missing from their list of achievements. Of course, they've, they are the European champions. They've been the all England champions back in 2011. World Championships in Paris. They were the number three seeds for lost in the quarterfinal two years ago in Wembley. They were the number two seeds and lost in the quarterfinal. But of course, that Olympic medal in the men's doubles was Denmark's first ever men's doubles Olympic medal. Twice Denmark have ended fourth in the Olympic Games in the men's doubles discipline. They've made history as far as that's concerned, but that isn't satisfying enough for players. You always set new targets, new goals, more achievement. The Indonesians have come out a uh, lot better in the service situation here in the second game.
in the crowd don't like it. I have to say, I actually agree with the See, service judge. His left arm is yeah. almost horizontal. I think it was his fellow countryman, oh. Marcus Kido, who started this trend. Kido is not a tall oh. guy. Fold so consistently yesterday because then we would have noticed. Because yeah. I actually agree with, with the faults that the service judge is calling. I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think he's right. Definitely. Definitely. Just his fellow service judges are not following his lead. No, exactly. And that makes it very, very confusing for the players. <laughs> that could very well be. A result of the service fault being called. Carsten thinks a little bit more, and, and you really don't want to think when you're serving. You just want to let your body do what it's done so many times before. Taking part with the Danes, yeah, they're taking a little advice now, but probably towel down or something to sort of break the rhythm. Good service. You can see that the Indonesians have managed to open up the court here. And showing some good skills in the soft flat game. try to continue but the Danes are not better than the Indonesians in this fast flat game oh, so midway through the second game match only in progress 21 minutes and there's been so many matches where we've seen this happen the one side either singles or doubles are winning the first game quite convincingly and then suddenly it's all changed around in the second from some time ago had talent because he put up two medals at the World Junior Championships in 2009, both in mixed doubles and a men's doubles. A men's doubles with a certain Arendi Sugiato. This is actually what the spectators, what the audience want to see. It's what I want to see. Yeah. Exchanges. Yeah. yeah. I like to see the... I know you as a coach, will, you know, analyse things and look at tactics, but from a, a fan point of view, seeing these longer rallies and the flat oh! exchanges, I love seeing it. It's much more fun. Yeah. I mean, there's been talks of changing the service oh. rules for doubles, and so far yeah. nothing has been done. I don't know if they're back in the box or they're still being considered, but I don't think we should be so afraid of making changes. I mean, the new scoring system, everybody's adapted. Yeah. Nobody's talking about how we should convert back to the old scoring system. Well, I mean, it's. I can remember when I was an up-and-coming player, they were talking about uh, doing away with the double service line for men's doubles, and, you know, so crikey, they've been talking about that for decades, because I'm now very old. Yeah, 
to see played that smash, Matthias Boat. The Danes are not at all comfortable anymore. time that's uh, yeah we can't oppose a lot to that tactics as that was the one the Danish yeah. labels daily doubles applied Participation from Anga Pratama. The Danes need to rely a little bit more on their on their defense and not be afraid to play the backcourt. Perhaps also a flicker or two when they hold the service. It's so important to keep the whole court in use. The Indonesians have been doing brilliantly here in the second game. Plus, they've had a solution for the service situation. lead for the Indonesians, but I've often seen Karsten and Tears come back from big deficits to steal a game or two. Mm, good return. I'm thinking, could he even reach the flick serve? He seems so focused on the short serves. Mm. Mm, one great return. Compliment repaid. because they lured Boer into playing these flat pushes and the Indonesians, they have to eat the upper hand of that game. Deciding game. I think I heard the coaches suggest that he should do the same return as Matthias Bohr, but the service wasn't at the same spot. Astonishing how 
how things have changed. Yeah. Game point opportunities to level this quarter final. Really impressive turnaround by the Indonesians. And of course, uh, two young Indonesians can rely on Harry Imam Pamadi because he's been coaching as long as I can remember. Well, for those two games, it's just a couple of minutes longer than the opening game of a quarter-final men's singles we watched this morning between Lin Dan and Chen Long. And for all the technical merits of the quality of serves and returns of serve and third shot interceptions, to me this is worrying because it's not really a spectacle. It is for the connoisseur like you, Steen, because you, you see the skills and the intricacies of how they're playing the returns and where they're placing the shuttle, but, you know... I take your point. For, for uh, the usual spectator, it's just the service and a number of mistakes. Exactly. And the lots, uh, lots of whys. Why mm. don't they yeah. lift? Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Yeah. It's, it's almost to me as if you know, a few years ago at Wimbledon tennis, there were so many complaints that, you know, the big service, it was just yeah. an ace yeah. or an unreturnable serve. And everybody said men's tennis is boring. Yeah. And it's, it's difficult to watch on telly as well when, when, the, when the rallies are so short because everything goes on with small movements around yes. the net. So you can't really follow it in a good way. Well, all that aside, there's a quarter-final to be one here, one pair. will be guaranteed a medal. It's very interesting that it seems that the good side um, for the doubles is the far side of the court. Yeah. Rally. Good to see that Danes have got fleet serves back in their game. So good. 
around there, Korean Suputra. So he made a reverse push. It looked like he was going to target Kost Mogensen, but instead he twisted his racket in the last minute. Put it down on the board. But very lucky with the third shot. That's a good shot. in the rally so to speak and then as soon as they succeed they take half a step forward and ready to push ah. excellent play Service errors in a row, one from the Indonesians, one from the Danes. Oh. Something with the good style of the Danes is neutralized. I must admit, in the first game, I couldn't really see how. This Indonesian pair had beaten Liu Xiaolong and uh, Xiu Xihan, but uh, hey, now I, I get it. Yeah. Mm. Extremely fast in the reactions, even though the Danes hit the net port, they still managed to return it with quality. They have to find the right um, mental state where they're alert without being tensed, and that's so difficult. Presented the racket, didn't think he could make generate that sort of power, but it's very good. Yeah. You have to be so powerful in your fingers and your uh, lower arm. Yeah. I suppose most of these, or not, if not all of these players, they practice with. Heavier rackets, squash rackets. Questionable that line called no, it was just the coaches that were watching. Oh yeah, it's clearly in. Great 
save by Matthias Ball. Aimed at his right hip, I think, but he managed to get away. Still return the shot. three-point advantage as they change ends in this third and deciding game. Will it be decisive lead? Of course, both pairs have enjoyed more success from the far side of the court, the end of the court, that the Indonesians will finish this match. that the Danes could open up a five-point lead and that would put a lot of psychological pressure on the Indonesians. I think we're going to see at least the Danes take longer and longer time between the rallies in order to be mentally fully prepared. away to the Danes if they lift it's flat lift preventing the Danes from launching their steep smashes and that final defensive shot from Saputra driving the shuttle back flat over the net Serving crucial. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Nice drop shot to the centre of the court. Both the Indonesians slightly hesitant. Yes, sort of 
point exchange is to the advantage of the Danes because they're threatening to open up a decisive gap. Another good save. Another one. No, I'm surprised that Carsten Mergensen, I'm not quite sure what he was complaining to the umpire about there. I mean, they just won a rally. They had no entitlement to win. <laughs> yeah. You would have thought that they'd say, OK, we're on a roll. Don't get distracted and embroiled in arguments. Short. I think from Pratana. And this little break all depends how the players react to this. The Danes have been on a bit of a roll, haven't they? Yeah, they've, it, they've sort of won some points that perhaps they couldn't expect to win. The score could easily have been. 15-14 Indonesia, so mm. they bit. still need to be really, really concentrated to the slightest break of concentration and you lose points just like that. Umpire's going to have a word with Carsten Mogensen, and rightly so. He does take an age in between points, yeah. and it's quite deliberate. You predicted they'd do that. Best player on the court right now is uh, Matthias Ball. At least the most valuable player. MVP. Ah! Yeah. Oh! Uh, and again. Oh, that's interesting. Indonesians wanted to change the shuffle. The Danes said no. And the umpire said yes, change it. Ah! away from a place in the semi-final. Hey. Two points away from a guaranteed medal. Top 
of the tape and fill back the Danish side. minutes the Danes on the verge of this quarter-final victory six match point opportunities Take it on 17 than on 19. Or actually, it doesn't matter if I'm sure I can take it on 19, but uh, mm. three easy points here for the Indonesians. Yeah. Three match points have come and gone. And another three remain. Good sir. There it is. Mogensen have guaranteed themselves a medal at the World Championships. 21-13, 11-21, 21-17, this is how they did it. The question is, what colour will the medal be? Fifty-two minutes. And their confirmation of the scoreline. Three games required by the Danes, but they will play against Kim Ki Jung and Kim Sa Ran in tomorrow's semi finals. In fact, we'll have all of tomorrow's semi finals for you. Same as today, it will be 12 noon, an afternoon session, 6 o'clock in the evening local time. But what a day it's been, what an evening it's been. Only one of our matches not going the full distance. The world number one, Lee Chong Wei, was utterly superb against Tommy Sugiato and won his match in just 30 minutes. The first match, of course, desperately disappointing for Jan Jorgensen. He saved four match points from 16-20 down before Nguyen closed it out on his fifth match point opportunity. Then we saw drama in the women's singles and the former world junior champion, Ratchanuk Intanon. Well, she had three match points in her second game. Carolina Marin from Spain wasn't having any of it. She forced a decider. With the women's doubles, the European champions from Denmark, Peterson and Ruta Yule, well, they had to battle hard in an hour and two minutes to beat Bao Yi Sin and Zhong Xian Sin. And as we've just seen in the men's doubles, well, Matthias Bo and Carsten Mogensen have guaranteed themselves a semi-final and a medal 
at these World Championships. We're back tomorrow from all of us here in Guangzhou. See you at 12 o'clock. Bye for now.